Hey guys, I'm Steve Gao and you're watching Smoke Trails Barbecue. In this video, we're gonna cook a 12 pound brisket on the Pit Boss 456D pellet grill. Now I'm gonna show you how to trim the brisket, how to inject it, how to prepare it with some rub, and how to smoke it low and slow on the Pit Boss so you get a nice tender delicious brisket with a crispy bark. So stick around, let's get to the video. All right, the first thing we wanna do with brisket is inject it. I like to leave it inside of the plastic wrapping while I inject it and just poke the injection needle through this because it makes it a lot cleaner and a lot easier to clean up. So we're gonna mix our injection fluid now. And what we'll be using is some Cosmos Q Moisture Magic. This is a phosphate mix. A lot of competition barbecuers use this because it helps retain moisture in the brisket. So this is really gonna help out and it's gonna help keep the brisket nice and juicy. So let's mix this up. I've got some beef stock that I prepared. So this is homemade beef stock. I've got four cups of that. And we're going to mix, let's see, four cups of beef stock. So that's two tablespoons per cup. So I'll be mixing eight tablespoons of this Cosmo Q Moisture Magic in here. And now we'll take our injection needle. We'll just fill it up with some liquid. And now we'll just start injecting it with the grain into the brisket at one inch increments. Okay, gloves are on. So we're gonna trim this fat cap down to a quarter inch thickness on the top. And that's gonna remove most of the fat. And it's going to allow all the smoke and all of the rub that we're gonna to add to penetrate further into the meat. And it's gonna make it much more flavorful. Plus a lot of people don't like a big chunk of fat on their brisket, so it's often nice to carve off a bunch of it. There we go, I'm happy with that. So there's always a really hard piece of fat that's pretty much inedible. It's right under the point muscle where the point meets the flat. So we're going to really remove that. We're gonna try not to cut too deep though because that fat is also going to help the brisket cook more evenly. Rub, and what I'm doing for rub, we're gonna use this Weber KC style barbecue rub. It's got some salt in it, some sugar, chili pepper, garlic, onion, spices, paprika. We're gonna use this, but we're gonna add a little bit of pepper just to get more of a classic kind of Texas barbecue flavor. So we'll do two teaspoons of this pepper, sorry, two tablespoons, and we'll do about two tablespoons of this Weber KC style rub as well. Just put that into our shaker jar. All right, we'll shake this up first. Now we'll give this a coat, nice and high up so that we're covering it evenly. Now usually I'd be applying the salt first and then I'd let it dry brine for a little bit, but because I'm using the Weber KC style rub, which already has the salt in it, I'm just applying them both at the same time now. But the same process applies. Once we apply this rub, we'll let it rest at room temperature for two hours and that's gonna dry brine the brisket and it's gonna help it retain that flavor. So next up, after this is dry brine, we're gonna put it on the Pit Boss 456D at 225 degrees Fahrenheit. All right guys, we're out here at the Pit Boss 456D and I've got this set to 225 degrees Fahrenheit. I've let it preheat for about 20 minutes and the smoke is starting to roll. So now it's time to put our brisket on. Our brisket has rested or tempered at room temperature for about two hours. So we've allowed that temperature to come up a little bit from the fridge and now it's time to put it on the grill. So let's do this. Now the key here is we wanna put the brisket as far to the right hand side as possible. Most of the heat is coming from the left hand side. So what we want to do is we want to put the point side of the brisket on the left hand side where most of the heat is because the point is going to cook the slowest. It's the thickest cut of meat on the brisket and it's going to absorb all of that heat that's coming off of the heat source. So I'll show you how we're going to set this up. All right, so as you can see, we've got the brisket as far to the right as possible. How far to the right, it depends on the size of the brisket that you get, but we've got the flat, which is this side. You can see how it slopes down into the flat on the right hand side where the least amount of heat is going to come from. And then we've got the point side where the most amount of heat is going to come from. We've got it centered in the middle of the pit boss. 
And that's all we really need to do. Now we're gonna close this up, but first I'm gonna talk about how long this is gonna to take to cook. This brisket is a 12 pound packer brisket. So that means it has the point connected to the flat. It's going to take around eight to 12 hours to cook if you wrap it, which we are going to do at some point throughout the cooking process. So if you're planning for a dinner party, I would probably estimate around 10 to 12 hours. If you're done early, you can always put it inside of a cooler, put some towels in there, and it'll keep its temperature for up to four to five hours. So don't worry about starting too early and having a cold brisket. It's better to start early than to start too late and be waiting and trying to rush the process and upping the temperature. That's just a recipe for disaster. So let's budget for around eight to 12 hours. I think it's gonna come in around the eight hour range because this started off as a 12 pound brisket. We took about a pound of fat off and it's pretty thin. It's got a pretty low profile. So I think it's gonna finish earlier than later. So let's close this up. Now question I've been getting a lot in the comment section is how does the Pit Boss 456D handle temperature swings and hold its temperature? People have heard that Pit Boss pellet smokers often have temperature swings and even on Pit Boss's website they have some suggestions for how to control those temperature swings. I think that it's just the nature of a wood-fired pellet grill that you're going to have some temperature swings in the degrees of maybe 25 to 50 degree range. If you get temperature swings of 100 degrees or more, then that's another issue. But if you are getting some pretty bad temperature swings, there are some things that Pit Boss recommends that you can do to control those. The first thing is you can adjust your P setting. Your P setting stands for your pause setting. It controls the interval between how often the auger spits pellets into the heating chamber. And if you are having some temperature swings, you can decrease the P setting. So what happens is if you decrease it, that decreases the pause between the pellets entering the cooking chamber. So if you adjust your P setting down, that means there's less of a pause between when pellets are put into the cooking chamber. So that can help you with the temperature swings and result in less temperature swings. If you adjust it upwards, that means there's more of a pause and that can actually exacerbate or increase the amount of temperature swings you have. So it starts at P4 as a factory setting. So adjust it down to P3, wait 30 minutes, and then see how that's uh, adjusting your temperature swings. And, and that might help out, especially in cold weather, because cold weather can affect this quite a bit. The other thing, especially in cold weather, is you can buy one of the Pit Boss thermal blankets to put over top of this, and that will help a little bit with the temperature swings in extremely cold weather. The other thing you can do is you can clean your temperature probe. So you have a temperature probe on the left-hand side of the Pit Boss, and you want to make sure that that's clean at all times so the Pit Boss knows uh, what temperature it is inside the cooking chamber at all times, and that will help with temperature swings as well. The other big thing is vacuum out the cooking chamber once in a while. Uh, a lot of sawdust gets built up in there after a few cooks and it can clog up the auger in the cooking chamber. So make sure you're cleaning this thing after every few cooks and it's nice and clean and that's gonna help with your temperature swings as well. The other thing you can do is you can look at the Pit Boss website. They've got some recommendations. I'll put the link in the description section below so you guys can check that out. Okay, we're gonna wait for another four hours here. I'm gonna put my leave-in thermometer just to check the internal temperature. When it comes up to around 165 degrees Fahrenheit, that's when we're gonna take it off and we're gonna wrap it. So just wait, just hang out, and I'm just gonna have a sip of coffee and wait here and watch the smoke roll. Mm. All right guys, so this brisket just came off the pit boss and it's hit 165 degrees internal temperature. As you can see, it's developed a nice deep red mahogany bark, really crispy on the outside. So this bark is looking perfect. And this tells us when it's at this stage that it's time to wrap. 165 degrees Fahrenheit is a really good temperature to wrap at because it leaves you a lot of margin for error. There's still a lot of moisture left in the brisket at that temperature. So you can be guaranteed that you're gonna have a nice tender and juicy final product if you wrap at that temperature. So let's talk a little bit about why we wrap and why I'm using butcher paper instead of foil. First of all, the reason we wrap is it cooks the brisket a lot faster than unwrapped methods. 
and it also helps the brisket retain a lot more moisture and it just results in a more juicy end product. And the reason that I'm using butcher paper instead of foil is because the butcher paper is a little bit more breathable. It lets air in and out and it's gonna let some of that moisture out so it doesn't start dissolving all that bark that we worked so hard to make. If you use tin foil and you include some liquids in there, then it can dissolve some of that bark. So that's why we like to use butcher's paper. So how do we wrap it? Well, we're going to just move this over to the side here. And as you can see, I've got some thinner butcher's paper. It's not as wide. If you have wider butcher's paper, then you might not have this problem, but I put three strips of butcher's paper. There's two on the bottom and one right here that's going to envelop the brisket. So when I wrap the brisket, this is going to come up along the sides and it's going to help keep all that moisture in there. And these are going to fully envelop the brisket so that everything is covered. So let's move this as far to the right as we can. And then what we'll do is we'll take some of our beef stock that I prepared ahead of time. And I put this in the microwave ahead of time to heat it up. And that's very important because we want to have hot liquid that we're putting in here. And this is adding just a little bit more moisture into the brisket during the wrap process. We can put this around the brisket like that, just beading on the butcher's paper. And that's just gonna add a little bit more moisture. You don't have to go crazy with the amount that you add. It's just a little bit. There we go. So now we will start wrapping this. And the first thing I'll do is I'll come over like this and then I'll tightly put that flap up and this flap goes over like that. And now we're gonna do two flips. So I'm gonna flip it over once and then I'm gonna flip it over twice. So that's the first flip. And this is the second flip. So now it's the same way that we started off so that uh, butcher's paper underneath it is going to keep all that moisture in. It's not gonna drip out. And now we'll just tuck the folds underneath this just to make it a little bit more manageable. And there we go. So now this brisket is ready to go back on the Pit Boss 456D. It'll go on for probably another two to three hours until it comes up to temperature to about 203 degrees Fahrenheit, at which point we'll cook it for another half an hour at that point, and then we'll take it off and we'll start the resting process. So let's get this back on the grill. After wrapping, we're going to continue to cook the brisket at 225 until we hit 203 degrees internal. When we hit this temperature, I usually leave it on the smoker for another 30 minutes just to really render down the connective tissue in the brisket. Then I do my three tests. First, we hit a temperature between 195 and 205 and held it there for 30 minutes. So that's test number one, passed. Second, we pick up the brisket and let it bend in our hands. If it's wobbling around like jelly, then it's good. If it's really stiff, then it's not done. That's test number two. Third, poke your thermometer in the brisket. If it feels like room temperature butter and there's not a lot of resistance against the probe, then it's done and it's time to take off the pit boss. All right, guys, this brisket has come off the Pit Boss 456D. We let it rest for an hour and a half at room temperature. Now, resting your meat is a fundamental principle of great barbecue for a number of reasons. First, it's going to make the meat more tender. And second, it's gonna help it retain more moisture. So you always wanna rest your brisket for at least an hour after it comes off the grill. Normally, I would put this in a cooler and let it come down gradually in temperature. That's what I would do if I was competition cooking or if I had a dinner party later in the evening and I finished the brisket too early. In this case, I wanted to eat it as soon as possible because it looked so good. So I am just resting it at room temperature. All I did was just put it on the cutting board and I let it rest. So that's all I did. So now it is time to cut into it. You need two things for this. You need a long, sharp knife like this. It can be serrated or it can be a straight cut knife. And you need a beer, obviously because this is gonna go great with a beer and it's gonna be delicious. So let's open up this butcher paper and see what we got. And just so you guys know, I have a camera here, so you have a close-up angle when I'm cutting into it. So hopefully it's not too distracting. I just want you to get a good angle. So let's open this up. It's like unwrapping a present at Christmas. And we'll put our brisket down. So 
The brisket has shrunk quite a bit. It's probably lost about 25% of its water weight, but it's got a nice crispy bark on the outside. You can see the pepper very prominently. Smells really good, and this is gonna be really good. So let's figure out first what direction the grain is running. Usually before I cook a brisket, I'll make a notch mark to, to signify which direction the grain is running, but I didn't do that this time. So what we can do is we can just carve back some bark here and just check which direction it's running. So I'll just do the very end. All right, so it looks like the grain is running directly towards this tip right here. So we'll just carve that off just to make a mark and I'll double check and you can confirm and I'll show you in this camera that you're cutting the right way because you can see that the little pieces of brisket are very small and that means that you're cutting against the grain and that's the way you want to do it. If they were really long, then that means you're cutting with the grain and you don't want that because it's much easier to eat the brisket if you're cutting against the grain. So we're cutting the right direction. Now I'll take my large brisket carving knife and I'll just start making about quarter inch slices into the meat. Oh, we lost that one there, okay. Wow, look at that, nice smoke ring. Beautiful smoke ring, penetrating a perfect one eighth to a quarter inch into the meat. That's looking great. When we get to the end of the flat muscle, what we want to do is separate the point from the flat. It starts right about here. So we'll just make a cut and we'll separate those two muscles. You can start seeing that uh, there's a large vein of fat that separates them. So you can just follow that vein and it'll easily come off. And it separates just like that. So now we can put that to the side and then we just continue carving in the same direction against the grain. There we go. So let's take a look at one of these. Take one from the middle. Beautiful. So we got a nice pink smoke ring along the outside. Look at that red pink mark all along the outside. I'll show you up in this camera. Man, that looks good. All that fat has rendered out. It's nice and tender, nice and flexible. So all of the intramuscular tissue and gelatin in between these muscle fibers has rendered away and it's uh, looking really good. So we'll just peel one of those apart. Man, that looks good. Okay, so now we're gonna take a taste and see how it is. I want a piece with a lot of bark on it. So I'll take this one, rip a piece off. Mmm. Mmm. That's really good. You immediately taste that pepper and that Weber KC style rub that we put on. The paprika, the chili powder, it's got a little bit of kick, but most of all that pepper, those large grains of pepper. Man, this tastes good. Mmm. That's good brisket. So let's look at the point muscle now. So we'll just take these apart to leave us some room and we'll take a look at the point. So the point is gonna have a lot more fat in it. It's gonna be a lot more juicy as a result. So you can see that the grain of the meat is running a different direction, it's running that way. So we wanna slice it again against the grain. So this way, so we'll just put that over here. There's a lot of good bark on this cut. And often I'll turn this into burnt ends. So I'll cut this into one inch cubes and then I'll throw it back on the smoker and caramelize it with some honey and some sugar and then just leave it to set up. And it creates this really decadent sort of cube of brisket meat that's really delicious. So just cutting into it again, cutting into the point muscle, which is a little bit of a different muscle. And now we'll take a look. Again, you can see nice 
pink smoke ring along the outside and this point muscle, it rendered out really good. It probably rendered out a lot better than the flat actually. So it's still got some resistance, which is okay. That's gonna provide some nice mouth feel, some nice texture. Take a bite of this. Mmm. Oh, that's good. I must have hit a pocket of where I injected that injection into the point muscle because that's really flavorful. This is really delicious, guys. I hope you learned something. I hope you learned how to cook a brisket on your Pit Boss 456D or really any pellet smoker. So thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Happy smoking.